Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Earlier this year, I registered a business in Canada and the process for me was very, very daunting. It was so unclear, the right information was sparsely available. Even from the CRA website, it was all shades of confusion. But trust me, I weathered it all after not giving up. But, you know, I made several calls, got rerouted several times until I finally got incorporated. I also got speaking with a few people that had registered businesses and it was still the same thing. The process was very tedious, so unclear, but they eventually made it, but there was just so many hiccups along the way. So I decided to share a few steps of how I got incorporated, hopefully to make it simpler, easier, and simpler for you to take that next step. If you're thinking of starting a business here in Canada, this is a video to continue to watch. Don't go anywhere, keep watching. But I know that a few differences may apply with other provinces since I registered in Saskatchewan. So if you are out of Saskatchewan or you are thinking of registering, you also want to check what applies in your province. But most of the things I'm going to be sharing here today apply in, you know, Canada wide. Without wasting time, let's dive into it. So here in Canada, there are different structures of um, businesses. So you can decide to be a sole proprietor. You can decide to go into partnership. You can decide to be a limited liability company or a cooperative or whatever. There are so many of them. But I must tell you that if you had started any business without registering that business or setting it up legally under the CRA, then you are a sole trader. And even if you think you are not a sole trader, but because you have started transacting business without registering with the appropriate um, institution, then you are a sole trader, whether you like it or not. And you're legally required to inform CRA when you started the business and you could face fines for failing to let them know earlier before you started the business. So, um, the first thing to do if you want to start a business is to choose your business structure. I earlier mentioned that there are different kind of structure. So before you register, decide what type of registration you require. Um, whether you want to be a sole proprietor, whether you want to be incorporated, whether you want to be in partnership with somebody or in cooperation with somebody, a limited liability company, whichever one you decide, you must um, just make up your mind what you're going into. That's what they call your business structure. And if you want to register within your province or for other provinces as well, the process is slightly different. When you're operating under the all province business operations, that means you want to transact your business across all the provinces here in Canada, then you need to open an ISEND account, which is Innovation, Science and Economic Development Canada. That's the account that you need to open or you simply contact Corporations Canada via their online filing center for more information. So that's for Canada-wide. If you want to um, extend your business beyond your province and you want to open an, a company that covers all other provinces apart from a local province, right? And that's under the government of Canada. When you register your business under a single province, you are by obligation allowed to operate only in that province and that's what i'll be dwelling more on because i registered on the saskatchewan but for some other businesses which are also falling um if you're also going to be operating online you can also extend that um coverage to other provinces but you cannot physically go to those provinces to transact your business so if you decide to operate in other provinces you need to register your business under the federal and that's like the all province one I earlier talked about. And this covers most, if not all the provinces in Canada you choose to operate in. So if you want your business to be Canada wide, then you have to register under the federal. And if it's going to be provincial in a single province, then register under that particular province. Registration fee also differ per province. And for federal registration, you want to find out what it is so you are you know exactly what you are going for number two thing for you to register a company is to um, reserve a company name so i know that you 
want a name for your business right and you probably have that name already most people know the name like i incorporated my business this is distinct interiors if you can see so well i had this business running from nigeria and i wanted to continue the business here in canada so that was already a given and i was searching for that name i was praying earnestly to be able to get that name and i did so you have to reserve the company name and that's the next step so before you can reserve a name you have to have the name you want to register and request a business account search um go to corporation um registry.ca and sign up so right corporate registry.isc.ca and that's where you sign up for a reserved name so you want that name to be searched to ensure that the name is available for you to pick before you go ahead so first open that account with isc and isc is information service corporation fill your form for the name search and they will get back to you so isc is the leading provider of um, registry and information management services for public data and records so they have all the records and all the data for as many people that has incorporated a business name um you can't have two business names there's no way it happens um some names can seem alike but they are distinctively different so if you want to register a business name you have to go open that account and they will help you search out the name you'll be you you'll definitely be able to fill out forms and they would be able to search if that name is in existence or somebody has picked it or somebody even has reserved it has not gone ahead with it because you have about 90 days if you don't um pay for that name then the name is open for somebody else to pick so they have the data, the records of all names that are registered and will let you know if a name that you have chosen is already in use or not. So you need to also submit a registration for that business name search. It is not free, guys. It is not free. Have you heard that anything is free? It's only L that is free. So you have to pay. I paid $50 for the name search with ISC. And in the portal, you would put in the name that you want and choose if you want a limited liability company or is a sole proprietorship or is a partnership or is a corporation you decide what you want so you have to fill all those details in the isc account um they will they will search based on the information in the nuance database so their database is called nuance n-u-a-n-s n-u-a-n-s database and that's where they go dig out all the information for the names of existing businesses that has already been ex in existence so um from that database you fill in the nature of your business or from the your form when you're filling all these details you have to also fill the nature of your business um you know so many criterias for this so they know which sector you are um operating on the, the address that you'll be operating out of and um you also make some declarations and generally fill the form there's just it's not anything difficult but you just have to be careful with the details of what you put in there if you receive a feedback that the name has been picked you have to choose another name and pay another fee unfortunately um sometimes you find this happen um a name that you think is available under the nuance database does not guarantee that it is available and that's why i said look you have to pay for that search to be done when i went to the nuance database i searched the my business name was existing in other provinces and you know i mentioned i registered in saskatchewan my business name was existing in other provinces but in a little tweak here and there my business name is distinct interiors i have others have like distinct interiors um whatever something different but i picked a limited liability company so that's a different business name because you just have to pick whether it's a limited is a corporation you know all of that it just makes it distinct so if you find something there so it's still not a guarantee until they search it out by themselves and um well you fill out the names 
cross your finger hope to come back available for you to proceed with it and like i earlier mentioned you shouldn't start transacting your business until your name is registered so it's not a guarantee until it comes back that it's available um someone told me some time ago that he found an available name and it came back that it cannot be used simply because the pronunciation that he had was close to another one and you know all these things happen sometimes you have a name and the way two names are written they are different but the the way they are pronounced are the same so if you also want to pronounce that name most of the time we are pronouncing the name of our businesses where you're saying it to somebody and if it sounds alike like another name they probably won't give you that name because according to them it is similar but luckily for mine it came back in five days with a reserved number so when you find the name it is going to be reserved for you the number will be given to you and you have 90 days to provide the requirement forms and fees to the corporate registry to make that name you know completely yours so you have to pay that's another payment you initially will be paying 50 dollars in saskatchewan for a name search under the nuance um, category then you have to pay again to the corporate registry for your name you know to be reserved when you eventually find it so mine took me about five days um to come back and they informed me that it was available if you choose to go with that name that um you they've searched out for you or they've reserved for you um it's open to you for 90 days um it becomes open to others if you don't go ahead with it so if you choose to proceed with that name you need to you need a reserve number that is quoted for you to proceed to the next step so that reserved number is what you begin to quote for you to continue to make reference to that um business name continue to check in your i sc portal for this confirmation if your name search was successful or not for me i actually forgot i thought they were going to send me email well not call me but send me an email that my name was successful or not but i didn't receive that because that's why it took me five days and um i had to start calling so you won't receive an email I was waiting for an email and it didn't come so when i called i was told to go to my isc portal and lo and behold it was there sitting there majestically waiting for me meanwhile it has been approved like the following day so all the correspondence will subsequently be going into that portal it's like an email email portal for you so all the references or correspondence will be going into that portal for you to make reference to so number three you have to prepare and submit documents with um canada corporations so now you have your business name reserved you need to submit to earn that name so you proceed to make submission to register for your business name because it's now yours if you choose to go with it so based on that name that is found from the isc portal you will pick your entity name which they also call your business name um, your entity type, which is your limited liability, so proprietorship, corporation, you know, all those ones that I mentioned. Then you also pick your subtype if you're registering under a province or a federal. So that's where all those distinctions come from. So you have to pick this carefully as well. If you're going, whatever direction you're going with will determine from what you, um, select on that portal on the isc portal you will also be picking the nature of your business so if you like i'm an interior decorator i have to go on that that name you also have an opportunity to award class of shares for your directors on the company to a minimum of two and a maximum of four so you have to have directors so you must have minimum of two this was the same way because this like i mentioned has been a company that was registered already in nigeria and that was the process although it was very easy in nigeria incorporation here i said this from the beginning it is chaotic but i hope with this information i'm giving it will make it easier for you to be able to incorporate your business so for me in nigeria it was so easy so seamless and you have to like a business owner have 
directors on your company board uh, note that there are there are, there are also restrictions to um those shares or the shareholders that will be so you want to find out in more detail there are a lot of correspondence that will be thrown at you when you start this process so be careful to read in between the lines to understand everything that is um sent to you shareholders must also be residents of canada so you can't be in another country and want to be a business owner here in canada you must live here in canada then make the payments and keep checking that portal for updates keep checking the portal you'll find updates sent to you um nobody will call you nobody will send you an email outside that portal number four step is for you to obtain a business number and the relevant licenses you will receive a confirmation of your business name that's the registration with your business number that and which is your entity number in that isc portal your clients or entity numbers are like a nine digit number that identify individuals and corporate entities within the isc don't forget that the isc is the information service corporation in canada and that is where all your correspondence moving forward will be sent to with your isc portal already running you need of course your name your address and your client's number these are requirements that you need to transact any online service business so if you want to reach um into your portal you want to go into your portal your isc portal you need this number your client's number your name or your address to conduct transactions with ISC. So when you probably call them, they also have a number that you can call. If you need to call, they will be asking you for this number. So it's your easy business identification that helps you inter interact or transact easily with the government and saves you from mistaken identity. There's identity theft here. So all of those are unique to you, like your account number, you know, the way some personalized things are for you, you're saying, so this is also a number that is associated with your ISC number. And as part of the confirmation of your business registration, you will receive your CRA tax number. I need to mention that you do not need to pay registration or maintenance fees or renewal fees for your business number. This number is yours for the life cycle of the business. So as long as you have incorporated, this number is yours. That's the business number now. When all of these are met, you will receive your certificates and your article of incorporation in your ISC portal. And yeah, officially open for business. So from that step on, you can begin to transact your business, but we're not done yet. Number five, you need to open a corporate bank account. It's a corporate business, not a personal business. So don't forget to open a bank account in your company name which is um where your income will be going into you want to separate this account from your everyday account as you have a business in canada so don't don't model it up it also helps you to reduce your taxes and you can claim some expenses under the business which comes back to you in tax refund or generally just reduce your taxes when you file taxes in the tax season um so when businesses are incorporated it helps you reduce your taxes you can use um your expenses or some things if you probably if you probably work from home or your business is from your house some of the shared spaces or the utilities that you incur under your business can also a portion of it can be claimed back from your business um account when you file your tax so that's why people are encouraged to have a business here in canada so that you can lower your taxes we all complain that the taxes are high here this is one way to reduce your tax or manage your taxes so that they can go lower um, you can proceed to open a business account know that you need your company to have been successfully registered as you need to show your incorporation documents when you open your account it's like anywhere else you have your incorporation document that's your article and your incorporation documents you need all of that to open a bank account or a corporate bank account number six is to register for tax obligations so um depending on the province that you're registering your business under like saskatchewan and most other provinces like alberta there's a provincial sales tax of six percent 
and there's a um, GST of 5%, which is charged across provinces on goods and services that are sold. You must get registered with the Canadian Tax Authority, which for us is CRA. We call it CRA. That's the Canada Revenue Agency, whereby all of these are charged. Um, GST is goods and services tax, or you know, is either GST or HST, which is a harmonized sales tax, and that's five percent. Um, for PST, you register with the Ministry of Finance. Everyone, apart from um, a few entities, has to pay for GST and HST on purchases of taxable supplies. So businesses receive this tax and remit it to the government. If you buy anything from the store, from yeah, online, there is tax associated with it. Either the GST, which is GST or HST, which um, goes on all the supplies that you buy. But in the province, you have to also check other provinces to charge PST. That's the provincial sales tax. Um, I know for Alberta, PST is not charged. They only charge GST. And I think that's about uh, other provinces. I'm not sure. Most provinces actually charge PST and GST. So you want to check which province you are registering on that to know what is applicable. And um, companies charge GST for their customers for goods and services when their income exceeds 30,000 threshold. If you're a new business owner and you just started business, of course, um, over a four-year period or fewer, if you have not earned up to 30,000, you don't have to charge this. You have no obligation to charge this because it's not your money now. You are going to remit it back to the government, but the government is giving you a break from that. You can't charge it and they are not expecting you to remit it because you are still new in business. Um, but you still have to obtain your GSC HST number because that's still very important for your business. So if you're a new business, don't charge it. You are not obliged to by law until you have exceeded thirty thousand dollars in revenue over a four-year period but you must register for your psc as well with the ministry of finance now that you are registered your business for saskatchewan and maybe for other provinces you have to register for the saskatchewan e-tax um we call it set that's the s-e-t-s -E saskatchewan e-tax You'll be given a confirmation number and a user ID. And on the SET portal, you will find everything relating to your Saskatchewan financial filing. Um, whether you're paying or you're managing your tax information, everything will be under your SET portal. I'm going to show you what it looks like so you understand what the portal is all about. So as a business, you must file your taxes even if you do not make an income. And that's what they also say for personal um tax filing if you are new as long as you are above 18 if you don't work don't say because i'm not earning an income i'm over 18 i'm not working so i don't have an income i don't have to you have to file nil tax so as a business owner you also have to file tax whether you are um earning income or not and there are different tax rates for each business type on your business income however there's um, a 12 percent general tax which applies to all income that do not fall under the small business category so there's a 12 percent um flat um rate that applies so you can check on uh, set um website for more information on this you also need to register for the workers compensation board if you have workers employed with you whether they are casual they're regular they are contract staff you need to register for the workers compensation board what this does for you is that the board protects workers and employees if there's any workplace um, injuries and it also protects employers against lawsuits and helps injured workers receive their benefits you know everything this abroad is is in fact, filing suit or something, everything is they are going to court. So you want to be protected as an employer and also protect your employee or your workers so that they can also be able to receive the benefits when they, uh, when they get into any injury 
whatsoever during their course of work with you um th so that's what the compensation board does it helps both workers and the employers employers against lawsuits and um, workers to receive their benefits when they get injured so here in canada this is mandatory for all industries except the dentistry um the insurance industry and banking and these are cuts across all the provinces i'm sure with this information you are more than informed about how to register your business i've summarized this in just a few minutes but when you go into it you will find it easy as you navigate through um these portals that i've shared with you and of course viewing it with me as i recorded this video do leave in the comment section um any comments that you have concerning registration of business i'll be happy to respond if um, there's any and uh, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe on your way out see you again in my next video bye guys